Good evening. Okay, so the last time I was here, I was... Excuse me, your name and address. I'm sorry, please. Kim Bendis. I live at 2207 Mercer Court. And I'm here today, let's just start off um, the question I asked the last time before I was escorted out by police, um, which quite frankly, Mr. Worley, you've talked about clapping as being um, a, a show of intimidation and force. And what I experienced the last time I was here was a display of intimidation and force. I was asking, and so the viewing public and everyone here can know, who are we talking about when you say expert, experts in our field, hired experts? Because that's important to know when we're talking about fiscal questions of fiscal responsibility, health, finance, security. Who are these people? Because what I hear you saying is, we're being associated with the Neuperville Smart Meter Awareness and that may be a skewed perspective. What I hear you saying is that your experts are the ones that we should be listening to. And I have in my hands right here, we're talking about security. How do you respond to Pike Research? Talking about the guidelines for smart grid security on page, it's a 537 page document. And they're saying that this is too um, complex of a system to secure. The GAO, the Government Accountability Office, is saying the technology is rolling out so quickly we can't secure it fast enough. The, ex, the former CIA um, director, James Woosley, states, the National Electric Grid allows for remote access and former acts of terrorism. Who here, who here has that experience? We talk about health. Who has studied the health effects the biophysical effects um, as a result of low frequency electromagnetic radiation. I agree, it sounds ridiculous. However, who of you have studied that to give an expert opinion in clinics? Who has sat and made clinical judgments that, are, are, that your opinions are actually ones that we should heed? What about Dr. Martin Blank, PhD, microbiologist, studying this science right now? Um, let's get to really what I want to point out are two things. We can debate back and forth all day long. Whatever happened to our civil liberties, our personal property rights? After looking at the Illinois Public Act, Utilities Act, it says right here in section 5, section 16, 124, an electric utility shall not require a residential or small commercial retail customer to take additional metering or metering capability as a condition of taking delivery service services unless the commission finds after notice and hearing that additional metering or metering capability is required to meet reliability requirements. As if that's not enough, the Public Utilities Regulatory Policies Act, after their addendum of smart metering states they, um, in terms of time of use pricing, it says, and provide ind individual customers upon customer request a time-based rate schedule under which the rate charged by the electric utility varies during different time periods and reflects the variance. Also, it says requesting a time-based rate. Um, throughout this document, it's a five-page five document, it talks a lot about protecting our civil liberties about protecting our personal property rights. This is an opt-in program. This is being marketed, and back to West Monroe Partners. It even says here in the DOE, DOE contract, page 30, project design, plan outline. It says the recipient is, is responsible for developing and submitting a consumer behavior study plan. The project design talks here, point two, describe how the project will be marketed, not educated, but marketed to customers and how customers will participate Example, opt-in, opt-out, or randomly assigned. Nothing in there says mandatorily installed. So right there is my question. In terms of just how West Monroe Partners did the RF testing, I have a question here. The power density that was used in Elster white papers was supposed to be 1% duty cycle. After calculations were done, it looks like a 0.1%, one one-thousandth of the duty cycle was calculated. And so my question here is, you came off West Monroe Partners or the city, I don't know who, that significantly changes the effect of transmission and therefore radio frequency. By using the one one-thousandth, 0.1%, 
that's where you get your number of 84 seconds per 24 hour exposure. When you use the, right here in the ELSER white paper, it says a typical energy access smart meter transmits, that is emits power with an appropriate duty cycle of only 1%. 1%, when you calculate that out, it increases the emission rate and exposure to 76 seconds, every 76 seconds. So that means all the time, 24-7. I mean, and then when West Monroe Partners talks about whether or not we can terminate this project, right here, again, page 24 of the DOE contract, if the project is modified or terminated, the recipient will not be liable, not be liable, for repayment of DOE funds received and reimbursed. Further, if the project is modified or terminated, DOE shall maintain its responsibility to pay its share of all allowable project costs incurred by the recipient, but not yet submitted for reimbursement to DOE through the date of termination. In conclusion, all I can say is that this is an opt-in program. The way this is being marketed is as a mandata mandated project that is misleading to the public.